Dear saints gathered both locally and abroad, I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank the Lord for another opportunity to be in his presence. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your divine presence this morning, my God. Lord, we want to thank you, dear God, for your hands of mercy over the lives of your people, my God. Lord, you see each one gathered, Lord, all across the lands, dear God. Lord, we pray for, Lord, the people in the United States of America, Lord, these tornadoes, dear God. Lord, many saints, dear God, may be affected, Lord, or individuals, Lord. I pray that you'll be with them, my God. We pray for others, Lord, that may on the, be on the beds of affliction, that you will touch them and deliver them, my God. I pray for your precious word as well, my God. Lord, you are the God that watches over your word, my Father. I pray this morning, dear God, that you'll anoint these lips of clay, my God. Let something be said, my God, that will form a picture in the minds of your children, Lord, living at this hour of time. Bless us all now together. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning brothers and sisters uh, we want to thank the Lord for this opportunity we have to be gathered together our hearts go out uh, for the people in the United States of America that are experiencing this uh, weather conditions uh, we know that God has got all things in control we pray that his hands will be upon them this morning we have a message we entitling it the closing of the age of mystery the closing of the age of mystery my brothers and sisters uh, we are living at an hour of time where the world uh, brothers and sisters uh, just look at things that are happening and they feel that this world is going to go on for ages and ages to come in their mind they have no understanding that there was and is a great architect and designer of what is going on in this world. This world is not just left uh, in the control of the winds. Uh, no, God, before the foundation of the world, uh, he was the one uh, that designed uh, every aspect in this world. Now, we're entitling this message, uh, it's the closing of the age of mystery. So, no doubt, there was an out of time where there was an opening to this age of mystery and uh, we know there have been many ages and many timepieces but what's so important about this age of mystery it is a particular time that God added very close to his heart and uh, we know that God has dealt uh, with the many nations and people down through time but as we go into his word we will see uh, concerning this age of mystery. Now my brothers and sisters, this is a, a, a simple chart that gives you in a nutshell, brothers and sisters, where time began. We know that prior to this black uh, circle here was the prehistoric age and prior to that was when God, God counseled with himself. He sat and he thought so as I said, uh, there was a master designer behind uh, what is going on in this world. And we know, brothers and sisters, uh, the prehistoric age uh, came about, and then God judged it, and the world went into what we call an ice age. And then God brought this world out of that ice age, uh, brothers and sisters, through almost uh, seven uh, dispensations of time, which type, brothers and sisters, our God uh, will also redeem his people through brothers and sisters uh, this time factor as we see here. So we see brothers and sisters, uh, we're not going to go into great details with that, but we know that at the end of this fourth age or fourth dispensation of time brothers and sisters uh, that Jesus Christ came uh, into this world. Brothers and sisters uh, and uh, between uh, the coming of Jesus Christ uh, and before the millennium starts this is the area of time that we're going to talk about which is the age of mystery we'll talk about this later but uh, we're going to go into the Word of God to show you how Paul 
and an understanding of this age of mystery. In the book of Romans, chapter 16 and verses 25. My brothers and sisters, the book of Romans was written in some 60 AD, some 27 years after, I would say, the coming of Christ or the birth of the church. And uh, Paul is writing to the Romans, and by that time he has a picture concerning this age of mystery. My brothers and sisters, it's an age of mystery because it is an age that God uh, determined where he would bring in uh, the Gentiles, people who the world or the Jewish nation discounted, and uh, we know that they lived a very miserable life as such, and uh, it was within a certain space of time God was going to call us, we are Gentiles, or the nations of the world, uh, and show him his plan of redemption for us. So when Paul is writing, and it's the last chapter to the Romans, he brings in this mystery. He says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Brothers and sisters, uh, so that is why when we look at this mystery age, the beginning and the closing, and to the man of the world, he wants to just understand it with his intellect, but Paul talks about it as a mystery. So it shows that it takes the spirit of the Lord to give us a glimpse of this age of mystery. No, God did not give all the understanding at one time. Therefore, we see even Paul, brothers and sisters, uh, it took a few years before he can rightfully expound, uh, I would say with assurance and confidence, concerning the age of mystery. You know, brothers and sisters, when God spoke to Peter to go to Cornelius' home, and uh, then God gave him a vision, he went there, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, with many mixed feelings. Uh, and when God gave him a vision to eat, uh, I would say, the unclean uh, creatures, he said, no, Lord, you know, no unclean uh, beast ever came to my mouth uh, or never eaten of this. But God was giving a picture that he was going to take this gospel to the Gentiles who represent unclean creatures as such. So brothers and sisters, even Peter never had this full understanding. He was very scared to even go about it that way. But God was removing these scales out of these apostles. But it was to Paul that he could stand and confidently say that the gospel has now come to the Gentiles. So he calls it uh, the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. In other words, uh, though God planned what I showed from this chart, all the different things, the creation, uh, rather the prehistoric age, uh, the ice age, <coughs> bringing the world out of the ice age, uh, but in God's heart there was a specified period of time that was very close to his heart and he never openly declared it even at the beginning of time. It was at a certain time he would choose an apostle, namely Paul, to bring out this understanding. And therefore we should be thankful that Paul, I would say, set the gospel for the Gentiles with such clarity that today we don't have to say, well, I hope I was a Jew. You had the same privilege of the gospel and the redemptive benefits just as the Jew was given. So the word of God says, uh, according to the revelation of the mystery, the mystery. Keep that word in your mind because as we conclude this message, you will see how God expounds further about the closing of this age of mystery. So you see Paul is saying that this revelation of the mystery, which was kept a secret since the world began. Brothers, so from the time the world began, man would have never known what the secret was till a specific time. So uh, we see the same scripture, but I, I want you to see, now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, 
according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the beginning of the world began. So brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand it is not all our college education or whatever education it can be that opens this mystery. It is the Spirit of God. That is why, brothers and sisters, today we see a lot of people who become children of God. They want to remain in the nursery school. Now, my brothers and sisters, it's wonderful when a baby is born and it cannot directly feed. They take it to the nursery, you know. And many times uh, you go into a, a baby that's a premature baby. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's got all kinds of gadgets uh, tied to it. It cannot feed on its own even. But no mother wants it to remain in that premature state. Then finally it stays in the nursery. And you know no mother wants to keep on visiting the baby in the nursery. But when we become children of God and we are born again, the denominational world and the religious world want to keep you in the nursery. Brothers, they want to sing songs concerning the nursery. They, they just want to stay there. And it's wonderful, brothers, when we come through that. But let us realize that God wants us to move out of the nursery. And my brothers and sisters, I remember, brothers and sisters, when uh, our first son was born, brothers and sisters, uh, Isaac, uh, you know, he, 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 he breastfed for a while. But then after that, I, my shopping list changed. I have to think about, firstly, uh, brothers, what milk you have to buy, and you have to remember the, the names of the milk. And then you get into, I think it was purity and, and that. But then you get the different, different uh, uh, meals, you know, brothers and sisters. And then we used to watch uh, which he would love the best. And my brothers and sisters, whether the plum or whether the butternut or, or whatever that was. But you know uh, that he too couldn't stay on that for too long because he had to move out of that. And in the word of God, it's the same way. That God wants us to move out of the nursery school into uh, his precious word and that doesn't take away what you get when you come through the doorway of Christianity so we're living at the end time now brothers and sisters uh, we're living uh, in a short few years of the coming of Jesus Christ uh, so we have to understand uh, what is this mystery was there something that God hid from the foundation of the world and revealed at a specific time uh, and you're not going to get that in the nursery school You'll have to be able to allow the Spirit of God to turn the pages of His Word. Uh, place an appetite in your soul uh, and you know your taste buds will have to start uh, opening up to what God has got in His Word. Uh, so Paul says uh, this mystery but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophet according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So you see Paul is talking very freely. He's not saying to the Jewish race. He says to all nations. And it is manifest or declared by the scriptures of the prophets. So in other words, it was written in the prophets here and there and everywhere. But when God said it was kept secret, it remains a secret till he will get a man to open that secret. So we know, brothers and sisters, that God spoke to Moses to write the book of Genesis. And he said, I will bless those who bless you and will curse him who curses you. And in, and in you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So in Genesis 12, 3, this scripture was written, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Not much was given there. And the word family, so the Jewish race, because they were a little selfish then, they wanted to think this doesn't go outside the Jewish race. It remains with the tribes of the Jews, the families. And you know how it is, brothers and sisters. Many times you want to keep it within the family. But brothers, the Jewish race was just like that. They said, no, this is not going to the other nations. But you know, after Abraham uh, was to give his son as a sacrifice and he was willing to do that, God wrote in Genesis 22:18. He said, through your offspring. And he was looking at 
the offspring, Jesus Christ. But yea, it says, all nations on earth will be blessed. So he took it out from all the families. He said, all nations. But yet, how it was going to be done was kept a secret. And the Jewish nation didn't want to believe that this can go out of the Jewish. They, they said, well, when Messiah comes, that offspring, and maybe when it gets into the millennium, the Jews will remain under him, and that's how they're going to be blessed. But brothers and <laughs> sisters, God at a, that period of time, the age of mystery, was kept secret in the mind of God because out of that age of mystery was going to come the bride for his son, Jesus Christ. So it was a very special timepiece that he kept secret, that he never declared it till a certain time. So when Jesus Christ, the offspring, came on the scene, brothers and sisters, many times he gathered his disciples together and he began to talk about many mysteries, not just the mystery that we are talking, which is an age of mystery, but he talked about mysteries that would be contained in that age of mystery. So, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? In other words, Lord, we want to get a greater following. We want to get a greater crowd. Why don't you talk in easy language? You're talking in parables. They don't understand. Remember, brothers, these people that are in reference to, they don't understand, are not the man of the world, not the unbeliever. The multitudes that were following him were religious Judaistic people. And it, it represents the religious people of the hour we live in. Brothers and sisters, if you have to take what God has opened up to the bride of Christ in this hour of time, it will still remain as a parable to many of the people. Brothers and sisters, uh, you open, uh, I would say, the book of Revelation, which is a love letter to the bride of Christ, and you talk it to them uh, that, you know, God has opened up seven church ages or the seals. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's not that they could not understand, they refused to understand. And my brothers, these multitudes that were following Jesus, they had the oracles, they had everything, they had all that should have pointed them to the Messiah. But Jesus gave these parables, and the disciples shook their head. Why are you speaking in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. Brothers, it, it's not given to the world that is closed the doors to an understanding, to a revelation, but to you and the disciples typified and typed the bride of Jesus Christ, the born-again children of God. Remember, they were the first ones to understand who the Messiah is to be. Because Peter, he knew Jesus, thou art the Son of God. So it says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. So brothers and sisters, it's not God is unjustified or God as a dislike. The word of God says, whomsoever will, let him come. But the world, brothers and sisters, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, all of these men, they had the same opportunity you and I had. But they closed the door. They wanted to stay in the nursery school. They don't want to move on. But in the natural world, brothers, they want to show all the accolades they have. But when it comes to the spiritual school, they'd rather go to a seminary, rather take an online Bible course. But instead of going on their knees and saying, Lord, open this to me, they will refuse to do that. Then Jesus so it was very open and he said, to you it is given, but to them it is not given. But blessed, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. So brothers, it's talking about the Holy Ghost eye, the inner eye, and the Holy Ghost here. That is why you wonder many times, how come? Brothers, you dish the food, uh, the spiritual word of God, uh, and you can see, brothers, how many people really appreciate it. Brothers and sisters, uh, you, you know, it's a world of technology today. 
And my brothers and sisters, you will see uh, how the people respond. Does it uh, make the man of God or a child of God feel bad? No, he understands. Uh, he knows as Jesus understood. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's not our duty to make everyone, uh, brothers and sisters, respond. Uh, the choice is theirs. But it's for us to present the truth of the living word. So the word of God says, brothers and sisters, uh, blessed are your ears. And brothers, the Holy Spirit can bless your ears and your eyes in this time. And uh, so we know it's a blessing to have the Spirit of God do that. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. And have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Brothers, if we only understand and, and knew how saints of bygone days. Brothers, uh, they didn't have cell phone. They didn't have the library on a cell phone in their hands. They, brothers, their eyes got tired, digging, wanting. Daniel said, Lord, uh, what about this? What about that? Uh, and God said, no, Daniel, it's not for you. I seal it up. Other men of God as well. Brothers and Jesus said, many men desire to see this, but you and the disciples represented us. Imagine, brothers, how blessed it is. It's for us to know, brothers and sisters, that God has opened up these blessed truths to us. Brothers and sisters, uh, people waited almost 2,000 years to see the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And we, brothers and sisters, uh, are seeing the rebirth of Israel in front of us. We see the many birth pains that are taking place across the world. Our heart goes out because these calamities are not good to see, brothers and sisters. Uh, lives are lost. But at the same time, we have to take into consideration the word of God says, touch not mine anointed. This week that has passed, brothers and sisters, uh, the head of the Mossad went to the United States of America. The minister of defense outlined a plan and told them what brothers Iran is doing. And you know what they did? Brothers and sisters, they sent Israel empty-handed back. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, God is the one that watches all these things. Uh, and I have to say, yesterday they started, uh, brothers and sisters, military exercises in Israel, day and night, preparing themselves for what is in front of us concerning Iran. Now you put those pieces together and, and you can see, brothers and sisters, uh, down through time, Brother Jackson was told of the Lord. There'll come the time, birth pains are. Brothers, the national uh, circumstances that are taking place, tornadoes, uh, hurricanes, brothers, refugees moving about. Uh, and uh, you just have to look at some of these pictures. It's totally heartbreaking. Brothers and sisters, nonetheless, there were many people that waited to see. Brothers and sisters, we see that the things that we see today. I have to go a little faster. There's a few scriptures to cover. So brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ told the disciples that he went to Calvary. And my brothers and sisters, the redemption story started off. And my brothers and sisters, we see the church started in 33 AD. The gospel was offered to the Jewish nation, my brothers and sisters, uh, for a period of time. Grace was offered, the grace had started, but within that grace age, as time was going to go, was going to be that special age of mystery. Brothers, where God is going to start his work with Gentiles. And my brothers and sisters, that is why we realize when these Jewish individuals began to not take the gospel that the apostles were preaching. Brothers and sisters, uh, we realize that around 53 to 56 AD, Paul had a great revival that started the Ephesian church. So brothers and sisters, it's not difficult to, be have, to have a starting point of this age of mystery because my opening scripture was Paul talked about the mystery that was hid since the world began. And that was written at the concluding chapter of the book of Romans. But time-wise, brothers and sisters, we are around 56 AD, where a church, the Ephesian church, is an established church. But it took a few years before the book of Romans were written. 
And Paul could concretely say, the gospel is now within the bracket of that mystery age that was locked in the mind of God. And brothers and sisters, wasn't expounded. So we can see, brothers and sisters, the Jews were led into captivity in 69, 70 AD, and that mystery age went about. Paul, now brothers and sisters, in, his, in the AD 60s, is writing very, very, brothers and sisters, confidently, though being a Jew, writing to the Gentiles, I am an apostle of the Gentiles. I am writing concerning your mystery age. And my brothers and sisters, that is why we can understand by the time we come to the closing of this age of mystery, we cannot only talk about, brothers and sisters, the initiation of the gospel to the Gentiles, or only when it started, because we're now living at the end time, and also God will have a timeline and a timetable to show concretely how this age of mystery has been fulfilled and is reaching its conclusion in our timepiece. Because we have an ending scripture in the word of God to show the beginning and the ending. So brothers and sisters, Paul is writing, and we're going to go fast with these scriptures, but it's for you to see how he wrote the book of Ephesians, one of the last epistles to the church. He says, according as he had chosen us in him. When he chose us, he chose us before the foundation of the world. And when he chose us, he also chose the age of mystery. He also chose the timepiece in which Gentiles will be called in. Brothers and sisters, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So it was God's everlasting love, his redeeming love, that brothers and sisters, uh, he could look at us, and if he saw us in the pig's pen, he wouldn't have chosen us. But the Bible says he had chosen us in him, that is in Jesus Christ. So he is able to look at us through Jesus Christ. And that is, brothers and sisters, the peace that we must never forget. So we see once again, before the foundation of the world, right there, God looked down right to this period of time, brothers, yeah, the age of mystery, after Jesus Christ came, and the gospel was given to the Jews, and then it was extended to the Gentiles, Brothers, in this age of mystery, that is the period Paul is talking about. Having predestinated us unto the adopt, adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Brothers, he predestinated us. How? By Jesus Christ. We cannot do it apart from Jesus Christ. That is why in a few a week's time, uh, the world will be uh, celebrating Christmas. Uh, we know, brothers, though that date is not right, uh, but nonetheless, we are thankful to God that the Son of God came into this world. Brothers and sisters, it's through Him uh, that God uh, could predestinate our destination. Brothers and sisters, so uh, and uh, he, unto Himself, He reconciled us to Himself according to His good pleasure of His will. Brothers, God wasn't grudgingly embracing us Gentiles. It was his good pleasure. It was a joy for him to embrace us, to love us. Why? Because the substitute that he provided, Jesus Christ, willingly took our place. God cannot see us the way we were messed up in this world. He sees us through Jesus Christ. We have to establish that. That is the blood of Jesus Christ that God sees us through. Brother Branham said many times, you see through red, red through red, you see white. That is the way it is. Brothers and sisters, uh, so a bad pass through the blood of Jesus Christ produce a whiteness for God to see us through. So, to the praise of the glory of grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Brothers, it's not today that he accepts us. The word hath is a past tense word. Before the foundation of the world, God hath 
accepted us. You don't worry whether the state president accepted you, whether the pastor accepted you, whether your family accepted you, or whether some dignitary accepted you. You were accepted by God through Jesus Christ before the foundation of the world. That is what, brothers, puts a status to you. People, they say, you know, you, when you work hard and you get up there and you, you, know, you get your accolade and then you got a status, then you'll be accepted. Brothers, when you reach there, they'll say, no, you know what? What's your banking account? No, it must reach here, then you're accepted. Brothers and sisters, you have been accepted in the past tense by God and you fear not what the world has got to say. Accepted in Jesus Christ. Accepted in the beloved. Brothers, it's important for us to realize the word hath God before he created a sun, a moon, a star, an angel. He had a designated age of mystery. Where we have been accepted and brought in. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Brothers, you cannot pay in dollars or rands for your forgiveness of sins or the redemption through, through the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why, brothers, so many people, many times, they reach out, brothers and sisters, they, they, they've been the most glamorous people in the world. Finally, you see, brothers, they reached out and it's an emptiness inside their soul. God has given us riches, the richness of his grace. The richness of knowing that you've been forgiven and washed and cleansed. And also know that we are living now in the ending, in the closure of the age of mystery. For he's going to come to take us away shortly. So brothers and sisters, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Brothers, this word abounded is not a full stop word. It's a word that God continues to expound in wisdom and in knowledge. It's not to make you feel that you're somebody or great. But brothers and sisters, uh, for God to be able to take individuals that the Jewish nation said, uh, no, uh, they are just unclean creatures. Uh, but God said, whom I call clean, call you not unclean. Because God knew through Jesus Christ. And my brothers, it was not Peter that had the revelation. It was Paul who abounded. Brothers, you couldn't stop Paul. Midnight, he was still preaching. Brothers, day and night, because this wisdom could not stop concerning, brothers and sisters, uh, the start of how you come into the doorway of the gospel of grace and how God is continuing on. Brothers, uh, the, the myriads of songs that have been sung, brothers, this is unending. So we see it says, he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known. Now, brothers, Paul is getting to the point, even to the Ephesian church. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Brothers, look at the sages. Look at the people in the Himalayas. Brothers and sisters that write the Sanskrit and, and, the, and all of the other religious books. They are looking for the mystery of God's plan. Why is this gigantic world so beautiful? What's the purpose? Why is the emptiness inside our soul? Brothers, but God has made known the mystery. You know, when you, we were young, the, we loved reading these books of mystery. But all of those books had a start and end, and then they say, uh, read chapter 2 or read novel number 2. And brothers, it went on and on till you became bored of those books. But then, brothers and sisters, we see he made known the mystery of his will, his plan. And God's mind is inexhaustible. He has not even exhausted a little bit of his mind to us. The mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in the Trinity. No, purposed in himself, singular. Brothers, whatever the religious world gets, that the Trinity sat together and orchestrated a plan to make this world. Brothers, Jesus was no way with the Father in the beginning. He had a starting point. The thought didn't have a starting point, but he had a starting point in a sense. 
brothers and sisters, that he was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. But brothers and sisters, it originated in a mind that has no beginning or no ending. So brothers and sisters, we see he purposed in himself. He expounded the mystery of his will. Brothers, we don't have time to go in the length and breadth of that. But Paul expounds on that. Making known to us the mystery of his will. Brothers, imagine as a little child growing up, how many times you would love to know, what is my father thinking at this moment? What is his, what's in his mind? What does he think about me? What has he planned for me? Many times fathers don't tell everything straight away to the children. And brothers, this similarly, how people wondered, what was in the mind of the father? What is in his mind? What is in the mind of the father today? That is why, brothers and sisters, we talk about moving on with the freshness of his word. Because God opens up the carcass of his word. He doesn't stay with Luther or Wesley and Pentecost. That has been expounded, but God continues on to this time, knowing the mystery of his will. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he may gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Brothers, even as Paul wrote the abundance of this understanding, we know he too was limited because 30 years later, God lifted another man, another apostle, an old apostle of 100 years old, and gave him a furtherance of his word. That Paul himself, imagine you and I know, not from a salvational point of view, but from an understanding of the word of God more than Paul knows. Because Paul didn't know there was going to be seven church ages. He knew, brothers and sisters, about the mystery uh, of the age, but it was given to John to know that this mystery period will be divided in seven dispensations. It was not given just to Paul. So when we say that, it's not to uplift yourself in any wise, but to know that light grows, light increases. And so, brothers and sisters, in this end time, God will, will not want us to keep us with a diluted, limited amount of light. He abounds, he increases, he extends to the body of Christ. So we see, brothers and sisters, Paul says, for this cause, I, Paul, in prison, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, I am, I, my heart goes out to you. If you have heard of the dispensation, what is dispensation? It's a period of time. You get Jewish dispensation, Gentile dispensations, and many other things. But we're talking about the mystery dispensation, the dispensation of grace of God, which is given me to you with. The you with here is the Gentiles. I'm the prisoner of Christ for you Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, that is why we can say with assurance that we know, we know, brothers and sisters, that the word of God historically can point out that there is a beginning of this age of mystery. And Paul was the one that was expounding this to the Gentiles. How? That by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in words. Brothers, that is why today you may wonder, well, brother, if what you are saying or what is being propagated or said now or preached is the truth, why is not everybody seeing it? You know, brothers and sisters, the Jewish nation has got something unique. That if God gives them something, they don't change it over 50 years quickly. When God gave them the unique understanding, there is only one God. You can change a Jew a lot in a lot of things, but you will never shift him that there is more than one God. God saw that credibility in a Jewish, but Gentiles, Gentiles are a people that have a variety of natures, brothers and sisters, and within not even 10 years, you give them something, and let the grandchildren come up and also they have changed what father said. 
In no time, no, this is what he meant. No, I was, I sat on his lap and this is what he said. And in a short space of time, brothers, if they write a book, you'll have 10 books with different understandings of everything. That is why the only thing that can bring about a unition of understanding amongst Gentiles is they must have the same teacher and they must humble themselves and submit to the Holy Spirit. And if you don't do it, you will have confusion. That is why the word of God says through Paul that it was by revelation, by a Holy Ghost understanding, I understood that the gospel going to the Gentiles was in the mind of God and was hid in the scriptures. But it is given now for me to ex expound. And likewise, in this end time, there is a Gentile bride that knows how God will consummate and close this age of mystery. So we are all familiar with this chart that Brother Branham used. Brothers and sisters, historically, he showed this age of mystery, the grace that was given to Gentiles after it was shortly given for a few years, approximately 20 years to the Jewish people, the gospel went over to the Gentiles. And my brothers and sisters, Paul didn't even understand how long this would be. He never understood it would be divided in seven segments. But imagine we've been told and we know this by understanding, we're now living in the Laodicean church age. Brothers, we know further to that. Brothers and sisters of how this age is going to be concluded. Because we know, brothers and sisters, that in Hosea 6.2, it says after two days. So Paul never connected that. It, he, he pulled out of the book of Hosea how the gospel was going to come to the Gentiles. But he did not pull the time factor because it was not time for him to know that. Because he didn't even know that the Gentile mystery age will be divided in seven church ages. So it was not even given to him. Because, brothers and sisters, time still had to move on. And my brothers, we have a wonderful even uh, sign that we're moving to that's going to be an era of the miraculous. That is why last night, Israel started this military drill, preparing themselves. We're not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, or next month, or six months. God knows the time factor. But let us understand that the Spirit of God is not making us sit down and stay in the nursery school for the entire life. He wants us to be able to allow the teacher to take us through the pages of his word. Yes, from the bottle to the purity bottles. Taste that. Enjoy all of that. Let your taste buds open. Understand what you love and what you don't love. But then move on, brothers and sisters, uh, to, uh, I would say, uh, the first school, the nursery school, then the primary school. What is God doing? He is stabilizing his people in his word. So it says that God had no doubt a starting point and we move in time. We also know, brothers, from an illustration of the plant life that Jesus spoke about, that the gospel was planted by the apostles for 1,500 years. It remained underground because 300 years or 200 years, this is why I said, place anything in the hands of Gentiles. It stays underground because it goes to every side, brothers, the root of the plant. Brothers, not even a hundred years, and they came up with this understanding. No, Jesus Christ, some said, he was just an ordinary human being. He was brothers and sisters, and just like one of us that God used. But then, the other side went to the opposite extreme, and they said, no, he was one of the Trinity. He was one of the gods of the Trini three gods. And that caused the mass confusion there. Why, brothers and sisters, Gentiles cannot keep a unified revelation. You never see the apostolic uh, Jews ever went away from the true revelation. But when the first round of ministry died, Gentiles, brothers and sisters, brought about the Trinity gospel. That is why God had to allow this flow of revelation slowly to bring us to the point where we will be and reestablish what the early church would have. Why? 
God couldn't use one of the men out there in the religious camps. He had to have an Elijah anointing. It was already in the scriptures. Behold, I will send you Elijah. But the religious world didn't know what it is. Even at the first coming of Christ, they didn't know. I will send you Elijah the prophet. He will shake the corridors of the religious world. And say, come out of my people. Get back to the word of God. Because time is running out. Brothers and sisters, it's this man, as we will conclude in a while. It's his ministry. That that age of mystery will be being brought to a conclusion. In 33 AD, I mean 33, 1933, brothers and sisters, the history tells us on Sunday, June 11th, 1933, as Brother Branham was baptizing the 17th person in the Ohio River, a light appeared as a star. Brothers, ask the denominational world, uh, did you read this? Did you see this? Brothers, it's, it's been documented, it's been written because there was thousands of people, almost at least 400 that you know, could be documented, brothers and sisters, that was there on the bank. And there was a voice that spoke as John the Baptist was sent forth to forerun the first coming of Christ. You are sent forth with a message to forerun the second coming of Christ. He doesn't have to be here. It's the message that has gone over the world. Brothers and sisters, why? It is to bring about the closing of this age of mystery. Brothers, he was supernaturally declared, and we know as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, your message shall forerun the second coming into all the world. We know, brothers, that caused the little eaglets to see whether Brother Branham was the messenger. Because we know there were seven church ages and each of those ages had a messenger. And brothers, the religious world don't want to say that this is the Laodicean church age because then we'll ask them, who is the messenger? They want to say he's, uh, you know, the seventh church age, uh, not messenger, brothers and sisters, uh, it is the trumpet angel. But brothers, there's a big difference between a trumpet angel and a messenger angel. A messenger angel has a message. Those trumpet angels, brothers, are proclaiming how God is bringing judgments on this world. So we see there's a big difference in that. And so we know as the children of God that William Madden Branham was the seven church messenger. He came to this age. He declared a message. But the world that heard that, they put a full stop. They stopped. And all, if you have to go to the people of the message, and there are some wonderful people there, it, in saying whatever we're saying, we're not discarding any of these individuals. But brothers and sisters, the message was to take you to the book in which the message contained. Yes. Because brothers and sisters, Brother Branham pointed us to the word of God. And we know, brothers, his first priority was to establish what the early church believed in. The apostolic gospel. Because it was, it says, the faith of the fathers. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and the dreadful day. So there's two different comings of this Elijah spirit. The great was the, when Jesus Christ came, the first coming. But the dreadful day is in front of us. Before the dreadful day, another anointing which has already come, will come. The purpose is, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, that's past tense, it has happened. John the Baptist's ministry, and the heart of the children, that's you and I, to their fathers, to our apostolic fathers, Peter, James, and John, and Paul, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. We see the introduction of the curse on the face of the world. Brothers and sisters, we, look at the heat. Look at, we can't contain it. But we're thankful in the midst of that. God is fulfilling scripture. Brothers and sisters, so we know he was a restorative prophet. He wasn't to be the one with a perfection message. He was to introduce us to what the early church believed and an apostolic ministry would go forth to perfect the church. So the restoration was teachings of the apostolic fathers. And then he opened up what the book of Revelation had and restored what the Reformation teaches restored.
Brothers, that is why if you have come by the message, by now you should know what is the plan of salvation. He shouldn't be every day, well, brother, preach me a message about the plan of salvation. Then you are still in nursery school. The plan of salvation is very close to my heart. Brothers and sisters, in my early days, brothers, I spent all my school years, brothers, getting tracks, giving tracks on Saturday. My, my weekends were spent to tell the world. And I know firsthand how the world responds. That doesn't mean you push that away. But if you see anyone interested, brothers and sisters, then you open up, brothers, everything that you have and show it to them and pray that God may establish them and bring them to the water of life. But you don't stay there in the nursery school. You know the plan of salvation. It's the gateway. It leads you to know that justification is by grace through faith. That brothers, you don't ever lift yourself up and say, well, see, I was saved because I was born a Christian. You know how many people say, I was, brother, I'll let you know, I was born a Christian. You know, you got converted. I was born. What difference? It's through grace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, what a baptism, not in Trinity, but in the only name that can save you, Jesus Christ. Receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, divine healing. What is predestination? Eternal security. And brothers, what a privilege that we know the God head. Brothers and sisters, you know, we could have stayed with the Pentecostal message. Brothers and sisters, we are oneness. Brothers, but you know, we stayed in that rank for some time in our mind. But we've come to know, brothers and sisters, uh, that God cannot be born. Jesus, uh, the world says, well, God was born. God can never be born. God brought forth his only begotten son who was born and indwelt him. The God who cannot be born indwelt his son, not in Bethlehem, but when he was 30 years of age, the Spirit of God came down as a dove. And that's when Jesus uh, declared the God that could not be born. So brothers, even when it comes to the death on the cross, God cannot die. God uh, allowed his son to lay down his life so that now through his son, God who has no beginning, the Holy Spirit can reconcile us back to himself and teach us his word. So brothers and sisters, we see how God sent this messenger. Now brothers and sisters, it's as this messenger came. Paul couldn't talk this. The Reformation leaders couldn't. It was still a progress about the mystery age. It was continuing. Pentecost. Brothers, even I would say as Brother Branham came, but as that scripture of Revelation 10, 7 was opened. But in the days, in that period of time, of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, well, brothers, when people, and you know, we all were that way. When we listened to the message initially, brothers, uh, you know, we closed everything down. Why? Everything is going to shut down straight away. But we now, living brothers and sisters, now some 40 years, I say from the time we began to see the message, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the late 60s, or maybe, I don't know what, the, maybe more or less, but, but nevertheless, during that space of time, brothers and sisters, we came to know that God sent a message, messenger in this world, not only for me. Yeah. Brothers, they had to go through the world. Yeah. Our children had to be born. They had to listen to the message as well. They had to respond. Brothers and sisters, and I thank God, not many, but there have been few that have responded to it. Today, brothers, you put the message on, I don't know how many people will ever take the time to listen. But I will say every predestinated child of God will want to understand, Lord, uh, what is important about this? It is an eagle call to let you know you start to prepare for the soon coming of Christ. Brother Branham's message wasn't the end of everything. It was to point us back to the apostolic fathers because we know this further in the word of God that showed us there is going to be three watches yes. through which this message will be brought to us in its completeness. In conclusion, the first watch was according to Matthew chapter 25 
at midnight there was a cry made. Brothers and sisters, go you forth to meet the bridegroom. And Brother Branham no doubt expounded that message to make us feel and want to move forward to meet the bridegroom. But when he was gone, brothers, God would send under the second watch an apostolic ministry that would open furtherance to the word of God. That is why you cannot say when Brother Branham came, brothers and sisters, uh, it's at that time the mystery of God, the period of the mystery of God would have come to an end. No. That is why many little children were born. They responded. They've come to understand. No. These message will start to bring to a completion. We will start to know we are living in the last segment of time. Where this age that started with, with Paul and the Ephesian church age is drawing to a close. And there are things that will happen in this last segment that we need to understand. The mystery of God should be finished. So it's important for us to know how it is written. It, it didn't say the mystery of God uh, would be finished. It should. Should is not an instantaneous word. It's a word of estimation. If I tell you, they say, well, brother, how long it's going to take to, to complete uh, this house? As an art architect, I'll say approximately one year or one and a half years. It should be finished. Brothers, you can't go to the architect and say, brothers, as you timed him from the day, and they said, you said, should, uh, two years, now two years. You say, I told you, should. Now, you know, I had this problem and that problem, this situation, and therefore, I'm about to complete it, but, but it's going to, it's a should, it is not an instantaneous. It's an estimation. So, brother, but that estimation is not 50 years, 200 years, because you'll question him. And when God said it should be finished, means uh, as whatever purpose this message was brought, as it brings upon this ministry, that ministry will give us further understanding. That is why it was so important for the two days to be brought in. Because the estimation, as much as it's still an approximate, an approximate estimation, but brings about a more clarity of time than what Brother Branham would have said. So it should be finished as he had declared to his servants the prophets. So brothers, we know when Paul wrote there, he said this mystery that God gave by revelation, how the Gentiles would be brought in. He only saw it to the point how Gentiles are going to come in to the church of the living God. But brothers, all of this was still to be established and opened up. And God lifted a man by John to bring us more clarity. But Brother Branham was able to open up this. And in our time, brothers and sisters, Hosea 6.2 was delved into. Brother Jackson delved into it. It was to whet the appetite of the bride of Christ. It didn't, it's not a problem that that date uh, never was concretely uh, finished off exactly the way he spoke it. It excited the ministry to go into God's word and see if there was anything more. And yes, brothers and sisters, uh, when God said dispensation, dispensation is dealing with an element of time. Paul more or less said where it was started off. Historically today you can be able to go and see approximately when 2,000 prophetic years will be concluded. Beyond that, we also have, brothers, a time factor here that there is going to be an explosion in the Middle East. Brothers and sisters, we know as Israel is coming to this point, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a war in the Middle East. And my brothers and sisters, and God is going to still give further enlightenment concerning the knowledge of the seventh seal. So we know, brothers and sisters, the world is preparing for an hour. They don't want. Brothers and sisters, Biden says, Israel, before you do anything in the Middle East, you let us know first. And my brothers and sisters, Thursday and Friday, they made Israel the head of Mossad. And 
the defense minister to come back home with an empty hand. And so Israel had nothing else that it can do but say, we'll have to prepare. And if the time comes that we have to deal with it, we have to deal with it. But brothers and sisters, God is a silent listener to every European nation, every other nation, to how they are treating the nation of Israel. And my brothers and sisters, we would have no hope this day if we didn't have in the scriptures that brothers, we're not living at the beginning or the center. We're living at the closing of that age of mystery. And we have a timetable, not to an exact second month or year as such, but an approximate. So why does, I would say, the religious world and even individuals that God has given so much that when Jesus said, blessed are your eyes, that they don't want to know. Brothers and sisters, you know, if you just sit in the nursery school and, uh, you know, even there, you go in the class, they say, well, today the teacher said, I'm going to test on multiplications from one to six. And they want you to know everything about that. And then, brothers and sisters, they say, well, from tomorrow, we're going to do from six to 12. And you go into it. So likewise, God has had a progression in his word. That is why we are thankful today, brothers and sisters, that by his grace, we have a picture of not only what is that age of mystery, which we know is how God brought in Gentiles, but we also know the time factor concerning that age of mystery, the approximateness of that. We also know the signs and indicators how this age of mystery would be concluding. And remember, when that seventh seal is broken, that angel will be standing on earth. The Bible says he lifts up his hand to heaven. And my brothers, what does he say, brothers and sisters, to the one that created the heavens and the earth? Time shall be no longer. That means he will bring about the conclusion of this age of mystery. So brothers and sisters, we have to understand why would God have to say, by that angel, time shall be no longer and leave us in this period without any kind of estimation how we are progressing towards the time? Brothers and sisters, God has never left his church with the blurred understanding and revelation. Brothers and sisters, he has placed it in his word. And again, I would say, Paul said, how by revelation God made me understand. Brothers and sisters, it wasn't what he learned in the theological schools at that hour of time. And what God has opened up in this time is not because you pull out the textbooks. It's because you want to say, Lord, help me to prepare myself and also be able to have a picture how to prepare for the soon coming of Christ. So we thank God for his grace, his mercy, and that he had in the beginning of time this wonderful timepiece that he kept secret for us and he revealed it to us in this end time. So we have a loving father who, lo who can reach down to us no matter what your trial, your test, your problems. Many times it's very difficult to progress on but reach out to him and you will see that he will stand by your side and he will hold your hand and he'll walk with you. May the Lord bless you this morning. Amen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to live at this hour of time. Lord, while the world is mystified, why and how things are happening on the face of this earth, but I pray, Lord, take these words. Lord, you paint the picture in the hearts of the, thy children. Let them be able to see, dear God, that you loved us and had a wonderful period that you, you held as a mystery. But to us that you've opened it up. And that we can walk on for you. Bless your people now. Whatever the needs can be Lord. Touch them. Deliver them. Minister to them Lord. Take away every emptiness. 
Take away, Lord, every heaviness, Lord, and place a lightness inside the hearts of your children. Bless them this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Lord bless you this morning. Amen.